Hi, I'm John, the MedPod Engineer Termel, and this is about James Turner to the Registrar of the Ontario Court of Appeal requesting a certificate of perfection or an order of the court dispensing with the rules of the court. Basically, the Crown Attorney hasn't bothered to comply with four rules to do with perfecting appeals and slated the appeal in Kingston inmate appeals because inmate appeals, they don't have to go by those rules. So they're calling his appeal an inmate appeal, though he's not an inmate, so they can then say they don't need all this documentation. Here's his complaint to the registrar saying, how come the Crown's been able to get away with not complying with the court rules? So, Turner to Registrar for Certificate of Perfection. <clears throat> I've already written about the irregularities going on at the Ontario Court of Appeal with respect to James Turner's appeal a few times, and a video or two. Despite his letter to the Registrar demanding an answer, no satisfactory response has been forthcoming, though they've rescheduled the unperfected appeal for Tuesday, August 18th, 2009, next week. <clears throat> So, I've advised Jim to demand proof of a perfected appeal before showing up. James sent this to the Deputy Registrar. So, file number 49904, Court of Appeal for Ontario, James Turner, Appellant Accused versus Her Majesty the Queen, Respondent Plaintiff, Friday, August 14, 2009, to Sandra Theroud at Ontario.ca. Request for Certificate of Perfection or Order Dispensing with the Rules of Procedure. A zero. On July 31st, 2009, I wrote Registrar of the Ontario Court of Appeal, you get Thompson, that, quote, one, the correspondence in the court file shows that you informed me that the transcript prepared by the Ottawa Court Reporter had been rejected by the Court of Appeal Registry, and we were all waiting for the transcripts to be available before each filing our factum and then the certificate of completion. Unfortunately, while upgrading the transcript, the court reporter died and the transcript languished on the back burner of the Ottawa Reporter's office, but is now ready. Yet, I was informed that the appeal had somehow been scheduled for hearing on June 16, 2009, without the transcripts, the factums, or the certificates of perfection in Kingston, after appellant had indicated I want to be heard in Toronto with my supporters. Now, why they're holding it in Kingston, interesting story. That's where they have the inmate appeals, near the big Kingston Penitentiary in Millhaven. Three, Criminal Appeal Rule 15. Where the appellant is not represented by counsel, the registrar may require the Attorney General to prepare an appeal book. Four, fine, the Crown has been preparing the appeal books for the self-represented since R. v. Parker in 2002. Five, Rule 16.1. Quote, except in an inmate appeal. Ah, that's why they've slated this in Kingston with the inmate appeals. Except in the case of an inmate appeal, all parties to an appeal shall deliver a factum. Oh, gee, since this has been held with the inmate appeals, I guess we don't have to deliver factums no more. Sixth, there are no exceptions for skipping the filing of factums in an ordinary appeal. Is my R versus Turner? The first appeal to have gone to hearing without any factums in the record? Is this a first? 7. Rule 18.1. Except in an inmate appeal. The appellant shall serve on every other party for the appeal. One copy of the appeal book. One copy of the transcript. One copy of the appellant's factum. And immediately thereafter file with the registrar proof of service of the appeal book, transcript, and factum. None of these documents nor proofs of service have been filed. 9. Rule 18.2. The appellant shall file with the registrar two copies of a certificate of perfection stating, and 10. The certificates of perfection have not been filed. Is scheduling the appeal without it another first? 11. Rule 18.3. The appellant shall perfect the appeal within 90 days after the transcript has been delivered to the Court of Appeal. 12. Transcripts have just been mailed to the Court of Appeal. July 31st, 2009. 13. Despite the failure to comply with these four rules, I was given notice by the Crown that the hearing of the appeal for June 16th was now fait accompli, which could only be changed by order of a judge. 14. I brought these irregularities to the attention of Justice McPherson and asked for an order quashing the hearing date until all transcripts, facta, and certificate of perfection were filed 
upon perfection of the appeal. I also asked how the Crown had managed to get the appeal scheduled without the required filing of transcripts in Rule 18.3, the required filing of factums in Rule 16.1, the required filing of the Certificate of Perfection in Rule 18.2, and the required proofs of service in Rule 18.1. Justice McPherson dismissed the motion to quash the date of the hearing until the rules had been complied with and approved the unobtrusive way of taping the proceedings from my own notes with a small tape recorder. I was told that the court would explain at my appeal why they were not proceeding with the rules, by the rules. 16. Before the hearing of the appeal, a member of the panel slated to hear my appeal died and it was delayed. 17. Appellant has since continued to try to find out how the Crown was able to schedule the hearing without complying with Rules 16.1, 18 18.2, 18.3. 18. I again received notice from the Crown that the appeal is once again scheduled for hearing on August 18, 2009, upon the incomplete record complained about in Kingston. 19. I asked the Registrar of the Ontario Court of Appeal to explain why the Crown was able to schedule the hearing of the incomplete appeal without complying with Rule 18.3 requiring transcripts, Rule 16.1 requiring FACTA, Rule 18.2 requiring certificates of perfection, and Rule 18.1 requiring proofs of service. Yours truly, James Turner, Appellant. 20. To date, the registrar has not been able to explain how a non-perfected appeal could have gotten around the rules to be scheduled without all the documents required to perfect the appeal. Unless it's an inmate appeal. And gee, they're holding it at the inmate appeals court. It must be an inmate appeal and treatable like an inmate appeal. That's their thinking. 21. On Thursday, August 12th, Sandra Teruld, Ontario.ca, emailed the appellant and explained Further to our telephone conversation and your subsequent email dated August 11, 2009, you are advised that this appeal was originally scheduled to be heard on June 16, 2009 on the basis of the Crown's representation that it was ready to be argued. Mm, Crown says so. Don't even check the rule. You applied for an adjournment on the basis that the matter was not yet ready to proceed. Well, didn't it show that nothing had been filled out? Your request was dealt with by Justice McPherson on June 9th. He refused to grant an adjournment, but indicated that you could renew your request before the panel scheduled to hear the appeal, the unperfected appeal. Unfortunately, for reasons beyond our control, the appeal scheduled for hearing on June 16th had to be adjourned. They have been rescheduled for hearing at the next sitting of appeals in Kingston. Inmate appeals which occurs on August 18, 2009. You are still entitled to request an adjournment, although you should be prepared to argue your appeal if the adjournment is refused without any documentation. Argue your appeal. Yes, sir, send them in a disarmed. Any further issues or concerns you may have with respect to the scheduling of the appeal can be addressed to the panel on August the 18th, 2009. So if they're going to do it to you, you can complain to them then. Sandra Teru, Deputy Registrar and Manager of Court Administration, and noticed they couldn't answer the questions from the, about the Registrar, how'd they get about doing it? Just the court will tell you. <laughs> registrar doesn't know how they got around the Registrar's administrative rules. 22. Since when is a representation of a, that a Certificate of Perfection has been filed substitute for a Certificate of Perfection being filed? All they had to do was look. A Crown representation is an improper substitute for a Certificate of Perfection. 23. At no point has the Registrar explained how the Crown has been able to circumvent the rules, so I must conclude the Registrar probably helped in the circumvention of the rules. Why is the Registrar ignoring the Crown's break in the rules unless the Registrar is in on it? 24. The final irregularity is hearing the appeal in Kingston with inmate appeals. I am not an inmate and do not wish to be treated like one either before or after the hearing of the non-perfected appeal. It's in the correctional courtroom in Kingston. Corrections. Yes, sir. Bailiffs on hand. 25. The transcripts and affidavit of service were filed within the last two weeks. And the rules say I have 90 days to file factums and perfect the appeal for the filing of the transcript. From the filing of the transcript. Though the court seems untroubled by these irregularities, I do not want an appeal hearing without the proper documentation. If you want me to attend the hearing of the non-perfected appeal in Kingston, please fax me a copy of the Certificate of Perfection or an order dispensing with the rules of procedure in my case. 
Yours truly, James Turner, appellant. Copies to Crown McGuire and John Turmel.